Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Thursday which means it's Booklist Thursday and Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. And I just realized somebody left all of his tools on my chair. Thank you Matt. Oh well, whatever. Anyway, so for this week we thought we would give you an updated video on um, five of our favorite thrillers that we've really liked recently. I know we've done thriller recommendations before, but these are just kind of an updated list of thriller suspense mystery type books that we really think you should read. So a few of them I've read, I guess, somewhat recently and some are, some are a little bit older. So we'll just start from the top. So first one I have to talk about is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. Um, I like the uniqueness of how this is written. I like uh, the I like an element in a book where I'm like, I have no clue what's happening, yet I'm still here for it and I'm I'm all over it. So we'll give you what's written here, so I try not to spoil anything. Um, but we, it says, you won't believe what's inside the last house on Needless Street. This is a story of a murderer, a stolen child, revenge. This is the story of Ted, who lives with his daughter Lauren and his cat Olivia in an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All those things are true, and yet some of them are lies. You think you know what's inside the last house on Needless Street. You think you've read the story before. In the dark forest at the end of Needless Street, something lies buried, and it's not what you think. And it's fantastic. Ted is whole, a whole bunch of creepiness. And there's definitely a mystery element to this where you're just like, what, what, is, even, what is even happening? And that's all I can say, which is really a whole lot of nothing but I really, really enjoyed this book. Next one I want to talk about is The Chain by Adrian McKinty, which I'm quickly wanting to read another book by Adrian McKinty, which I have the island over here somewhere. Um, so this one follows this premise of um, you, there is this, this chain that's going on. So we have our main character, Rachel. She drops her daughter, Kylie, off at the bus stop and, head, and heads into her day. But she gets a cell phone call from an unknown number and on the line is a woman informing Rachel that she has Kylie bound and gagged and in her back seat. And the only way Rachel will ever see her again is if she pays a ransom and kidnaps another child, which is how she gets onto the chain. And so she has to kidnap another child and then have them kidnap another child and then kidnap another child. And they use this information against them to kind of make them follow protocol and there's always ransom that is being paid so kind of this mystery of who's running the chain how is it working how long has it been going on and how does she get her daughter back it's fantastic next one i have is riley saker last time i lied we have dual timelines in this one and this takes place as a, at a camp um so we have two truths and a lie the girls played it all the time in their cabin at Camp Nightingale. We have Vivian, Natalie, Allison, and first time camper Emma, which is our main character. Um, she, the games ended the night that Emma sleepily watched the others sneak out of the cabin and into the darkness. The last she or anyone saw any of them um, was Vivian closing the door behind her and hushing Emma to stay quiet. So then we go forward into the future. We have Emma who is now a rising star in the New York art scene. And she turns her past into paintings, um, all tied back to that night. She ends up getting invited to Camp Nightingale again, uh, I believe as a counselor this time. And she goes with like this determination to figure out what happened in the past. Fantastic. Loved it. Riley Sayers always delivers for me. So really highly into, or highly recommend that one as well. Um, another one I have, Hellas Feeney's Daisy Darker. Oh, 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 I still think about this book. So this is like isolated thriller, um, a family reunion coming back together um, at their grandmother's house. That's kind of, it is, how do they describe it? It's on a tiny tidal island. So when the tide is in, you can't get to the island. It's cut off. When the tide is out, you can walk across the sand. Um, so it takes place over one night and it has, and then there were none vibes to it. And it is, all kinds of creepy talks about what's happened in the past and then what they're facing and what secrets they have to deal with now. Holy family drama. It was fantastic. 
And then the last one I want to talk to you about is The Last Flight. This is by Julie Clark. And this follows two women who happen to randomly meet at the airport. And they're both just trying to get out of the situation that they're in. And so they decide the best thing to do is for them to trade tickets um, and each kind of go on each other's path to basically kind of just get away and disappear. Um, unfortunately, one of the planes with one of the women crashes. And we go from there. And it's so good. It's so good. I flew through this book in like no time. Absolutely enjoyed it. So... Those are five thriller recommendations I have for you that you absolutely should pick up sooner rather than later. If you have any thrillers that you think I need to read, I'm always up for suggestions. Thrillers are definitely one of the books that I tend to gravitate. Those and historical fiction I tend to gravitate to the most. So leave them below, like, comment, subscribe, head over to Sarah's channel and see which books she picked for her updated thriller recommendations list. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will see you next time.